All right, folks, there it is, the, the Great American Steam Bending Machine. Uh, I'm getting ready to fire it up. Um, but first, I want to uh, just get a big shot of it right here. And then I'll edit this later, and uh, we'll get a close-up here in a second when we uh, start to bend and stuff. All right, <clears throat> first thing we got to do is we have to load the machine. I don't suggest anybody try this at home. This is dangerous stuff. If this chamber got over compressed, it could blow up. Uh, the steam can scald you in really bad ways. <clears throat> so, uh, we pull the peg out here, and hopefully we can get it in without taking the wheel off. And that's just not going to be the case. Okay, we got the glue. Uh, it's got a set, it takes about 30 or 40 minutes for this chamber to heat up. That'll give me time for this glue to get thicker. Uh, sometimes I'll let it sit out for an hour or two first. And now the next step is filling the, uh, 
steam chamber with water. And we'll be right back. All right, we got the steam, uh, the tea kettle pot filled. I'm getting ready to plug it in. It's going to take about 20 minutes to, to get going and uh, you can hear it gurgling already but this is the it's great american simple. steam bending machine some people say it's the overcomplicated great american steam bending machine and she is about ready to roll she's loaded She can do, uh, or it, I call it a she because uh, I made it. I'm proud of it. It looks good to me. Uh, it's a, uh, can do two two pieces at a time, but we're only doing one today due to the lack of C-clamps. It takes a lot of freaking C-clamps. Okay, so I'm going to pause this till the water boils. Okay, see if you can hear that. Basically a tea kettle. I can bend up to uh, uh, four pieces of wood before the water runs out. I prefer a, a more uh, propane operated one or something, but uh, it's just what I have. I gotta do what I gotta do. And like I said earlier on my other videos, this is not glued. Kind of a safety valve, that way that no pressure builds up inside that tube. You don't want any pressure. No matter what people tell you, it's just about heating the wood up. Now you don't have to pressurize it. You don't have to use ammonia, any, none of that crap. You just heat it up and bend it. Can't wait. Still not ready. Had to get a new thermometer. Uh, the old one uh, was giving me problems. It's on my C clamps. My old man's old flag before he died. The drip bucket and a drip bucket back there. Hey, and also we got these five rims here. Got four of them. Actually, we sold two. We're getting ready to ship two today. So we'll have three of them left. They're uh, turned and stained by first quality music down there. They do have a little bit of a um, fuzzy spots in them, but you can uh, put more lacquer on it if you want. All this is covered up by your tone ring and your banjo, so you're not going to see any of this. But they are block and peg, highly, uh, highly stable. and uh, pre-drilled for a fuchsia uh, one-piece flange and a crow tone ring on sale for a hundred bucks each. Man, do they sound good. Well, that water's really boiling now. Listen to it. But see, there's a, a release valve right here, safety valve and a release valve, and it has to get up to 100 degrees uh, centigrade before the uh, valve opens to let the steam into this chamber. So even though it's boiling, it's not putting anything up in here at this point. You'll hear it gurgle like a glug, glug, glug before you, uh, it starts letting steam in. So I'm gonna pause this and let it do its thing. While the uh, water's boiling, I'll give you a tour of the shop. 
This is uh, where we keep the incoming wood that's getting ready to be worked on. Most of it's gone right now. Only thing left is uh, hard maple. That's a uh, hard maple right there on the floor. So it comes into there. Uh, we take it over to the bandsaw. And we cut it up. And then we stock it under here and on this table. And then we decide... Uh, which way the grain's going. Uh, if you look at these, the end grain on this, you'll see that most of it goes like this. Uh, I don't know if you can see that on camera. So those are the ones we use, the wood we use to make rims out of, to make steam bent rims. We cut them into planks like this. And then the ones where the grain goes up and down, which is, I think, quarter sawn, uh, we cut into blocks like this. You'll see that the grain on these goes mostly up and down, some of it's sideways. Good example. There's another good example. And that's what we make um, and take these and we plane them down with this planer right here. And then we get them close and then we sand them down the rest of the way so that the, uh, there's a rough edge on these when they're done. We want roughness so that glue sticks. We don't want shiny furniture quality. And then uh, we stack them over here, cut them on a CNC machine, and then they go over there to the sander. Uh, now once we sand them, uh, we stick them in these bins. Right now it's kind of messed up because I'm steam bending today. And these are our blocks. Uh, for uh, and You'll see the grain goes up and down on these. And uh, This is really pretty when you can see that one. So we set them here and we sort them out. And then we either package them up and put them in shipping over here and sell them as kits, or we go ahead and glue them up like these are glued up. You can buy them uh, unturned, or here's a walnut one that's been turned, and then we turn them and sell them also turned. We can custom turn them for uh, whatever you need. That's a beautiful walnut rim. Uh, here's some Honduras mahogany. African mahogany scraps from a company that closed. Uh, these are for the extra tall banjos that don't need a tone ring. They use a tone hoop from Stuart Mike up here, and man, they sound awesome. A very lightweight banjo that just sounds, it growls when you play it. And I love these uh, block rims. They're such less glue in them. They make a lot greater sound than you would think. And here's a turned maple. All right, so that's uh, basically what you're seeing. There's a mahogany kit we just put together. This is African mahogany. And it comes in a kit with your pegs and everything you need. All right, that's basically a short run of our little shop here for this, the Viking rim shop. Just checking, I think it's starting to, uh, yeah, steam's starting to come in, thermometer's rising. You can see it's on uh, about, it's starting to get up to 120 in there. So I'll pause the camera and uh, we'll wait till it gets up to about 200 and then I'll start the camera again.